DreAllDay.com. What's going on, everybody? Dre Baldwin, DreAllDay.com. We are back with another Success Principles video, and today we're talking about a favorite song of mine, a song that I think many of you know that some of you might not know about because it didn't come out on the, as an official album release. It wasn't on the album because we all know we've been waiting forever for this man's album. It's a song called Shiny Suit Theory by J Electronica featuring Jay-Z. Now what I'm doing in this series for those who don't know is I'm taking rap songs that other people may otherwise that a lot of people, I know not all of you, but a lot of people may otherwise hear and think you know, there's nothing of substance in this song because it's too much cursing or is this rapper he talked about this on this song he talked about that on that song and I don't like what he talks about I don't like his subject matter he just might not like rap at all but what I'm doing in these or this series these videos I'm doing in this series is taking songs and pointing out to you the principles of success of confidence of goal setting of ambition of the law of attraction of achievement that are hidden in these verses embedded in these verses I won't necessarily say hidden because some of you may know about some of these things but embedded in these verses amongst the quote unquote ignorance that some people may think rap music is so that's what I'm bringing to light in this song and this song is actually one of the best ones that I've done so far simply because I was actually only going to do Jay-Z's verse but when I started listening to the song I said no I got to do Jay Electronica's verse and Jay-Z's verse in this song because they both was dropping some real jewels here that y'all got to catch so I'm going to go over the parts of this verse I want to go over I couldn't even I'm using my iPad to pull up the lyrics. I couldn't get it to connect and pull up the lyrics from Jay's verse, but I already know the first verse, Jay Electronica's verse. So let's get straight into it and talk about what we're going to talk about here. So in the first verse, Jay Electronica starts off, well, he starts off saying some things, and then he gets to a part where he says, me and Puff, we was chilling in Miami. He said, so this whole, the whole rest of the verse, after he says, me and Puff, we was chilling in Miami, this is Jay Electronica telling us what Puff Daddy, what Diddy said to Jay Electronica. And he said, Nigga, fuck the underground. You need to win a Grammy for your mama and your family. They need to see you shined up. You built a mighty high ladder. Let me see you climb up. So let's just stop right there and go to this part. So first of all, Puffy said to him, fuck the underground. You need to win a Grammy. So it's not necessarily him saying that the underground doesn't matter or fuck underground rap fans or forget about your fans, forget about your followers, the people who you know made your name big because Jay Electronic has been kind of a quote unquote underground guy because he hasn't done anything mainstream yet. But Puff was basically saying, by saying that, he's saying, look, you got to stop thinking about going, being an underground star. You think it's too small right now. You need to win a Grammy. A Grammy award is like the biggest thing in all of music. You need to be at the Grammys on a red carpet with a suit on so that everybody, even people who don't listen to underground rap, like your current fans, people who never even pick up a mixtape, they don't know about that piff or downloading or none of that. All they do is get their music off iTunes or out of you know, Walmart or Target. You want people like that to know your name. That's what Puffy is saying. When he says, fuck the underground, you need to win a Grammy. And then he explains why. For your mama and your family, they need to see you shined up. Your mama and your family need to see you well out there with a suit on, with the big house, with the big checks, with the big cars, because that's what you get when you get a Grammy. You got everybody knows you. Instead of this small little pocket, the underground, who knows your name, and they love you. You're the man in the underground. He still is the man in the underground. Now you got everybody knowing you as the man. And Puffy knows what that's like, because how many Grammys has he won or been had a hand in somebody winning or been close to winning? He knows what it's like to be at that level. So he's telling Jay Electronica, listen, man, forget the underground stuff. Stop thinking so little and start thinking a little bit bigger. Make your goals bigger is what Puffy has said to him. And if any of you follow Diddy or Puff Daddy, he's one of my favorite you know, media people, celebrities, whatever you want to call it. He's one of my favorites just because, not even necessarily because of the music. The music is great. He's made hits, but it's the way that he thinks. And when he does come out and talk about stuff, and when somebody tells a story about him talking about stuff, and there's a lot of stories out there if you look around, him, he's always talking about these success principles. Like, listen, think bigger. Stop thinking so small. Stop thinking you can only do this. Think about doing this. Instead of thinking you want to get to a two, let's think about getting to a 10. Let's think about getting to a 200. Forget it. Why don't we take every lane? We don't need to be just this one thing. We're going to do all these things. And if you watch some stuff or read some stuff on Puffy, you'll hear these things. He talks about these all the time. So when I heard Jay say, Puff said these things, I, I knew it sounded accurate, not because I know Puffy, never hung with him before, but because I've heard these stories before from other people saying similar things. So he said, they need to see you shined up. Then he says, you built a mighty high ladder. Let me see you climb up. This is again, Puffy talking to Jay Electronica. So he's saying, listen, you already set the bar. You got all these people who are anticipating you being great. You got all these underground fans. You got all these rap fans like, yo, Jay Electronica's nice. 
but we got to hear the album. We want to hear him put out an album so we can see how good he really is. Can he be good for, you know, 15 tracks? Or is he only good for a couple verses here and there? You built a high ladder. So basically, you built a ladder that says you could go to the top by your potential, by what people are seeing. But now Puffy is saying to Jay, look, Jay Electronica, that is, not Jay-Z. Jay Electronica, listen, I want to see you climb that ladder. The ladder is there up against the wall that says you could be the best. But you got to actually get on the ladder and climb up there. Let me see you do it. And what's the next thing Puffy says? He says, nigga, what you scared of? What are you scared of? Which is what we talked about. We talked about this before. Fear of success. I talked about this on my podcast. If you haven't heard the Work On Your Game podcast, go listen to it. We on Stitcher, Google Play, SoundCloud, iTunes. We on all of them. Look it up and it's free. Everyday podcast. He says, what are you scared of? Are you afraid of success? What part of success are you afraid of right now? That's the next question Puffy asked him. So you can hear it. It's like a motivational speech, right? Listen to everything he's saying. He said, fuck the underground, you need to win a Grammy. So first he said, take your small goals and throw them away and let's go with some big goals. You need to do this for your mom and your family. What did he do? He gave him a why. He gave him a reason why he needs to do it. Then he said, what are they going to get out of it? They need to see you at the top. They need to see you shined up. Then he explains to him why he's the perfect guy to have these goals. Puffy said to him, Jay Electronic, look, you already built the ladder. I just want to see you climb up the ladder. You set this bar. I didn't set the bar for you. You already set the bar by the stuff you've been doing. So he's giving him a motivational speech and he's explaining why to do it. He's explaining how to do it. He's explaining who he's doing it for. He's, this is motivation right here that he's giving him right off the top. It's like a, a sermon Puffy was giving to Jay Electronica and Jay sharing it. He says, what are you scared of? Then he says, terrorize these artificial rap niggas and spread love, pollinate their air buds. So you need to take all these rappers who are not as official as you are, who are not as good as you, not as pure as you are, Jay. They don't have the skill that you have. They don't have the level that you got. You need to terrorize them. You need to put them out of the game. You need to completely take them out of commission with what you're going to do and spread love at the same time. So it's not about you no know, hurting anybody. You're doing it in a positive way, but you are going to dominate because you are the best. Terrorize them and spread love, pollinate the air buds. Then what he says, like you're supposed to. Spit it for the culture. So he's saying, look, this is a bar that's been set for you. You have been predestined. It's been predetermined by a higher being that this is what you're supposed to do, Jay Electronica. You need to do this. Like you're supposed to, and he says, spit it for the culture. You're doing this for rap music. It's not just for you personally. It's not a, an individual thing. You're doing this for all of hip hop. The culture needs you, Jay Electronica. They need you to step up. Like you're supposed to spit it for the culture. Then the next line, pay no attention to the critics and the vultures. So again, now you know when you go for success, when you start going for big goals, you're ambitious, what happens? You get negativity, you get people criticizing, you get people talking about you, you get people laughing at you, you get people trying to say negative stuff about you to slow you down from doing what you want to do. All of you know about that, right? So Puffy made sure he threw that in. Pay no attention to the critics and the vultures. they rather have a shot of Belvy just to spite you. They're passing judgments because they feel they have the right to. So your critics are saying negative stuff about you because they feel they got the right to say negative things. They feel like they got a right to an opinion. And technically everybody does. What's the next thing Puffy says? Fuck them. I let the dice roll like my father did. He says, fuck them. You know what? I'm going to take a chance. I let the, I let the dice roll. Y'all know what dice are. When you roll dice, you're taking a chance because you have no idea what numbers are going to come up on the dice. So Puffy says, I let the dice roll like my father did. So his father was a, a street hustler for those who don't know. I gamble like my father did. I'm going to gamble and whatever happens, happens, but I'm not going to stand on the sideline and watch the game. I'm going to get in the game and whatever happens when I'm in the game is going to happen. I'll let the dice roll like my father did. And he says, I got to shine. I'm a Harlem kid. Talks about a couple other things. And the last line he says, this is back to Jay Electronica because he talked about himself for a second. Then he comes back to Jay Electronica and Puffy says to him, I thought you said is the return of the Black Kings. Luxurious homes, fur coats, and fat chains. He said, I thought you said that, Jay. I thought you said it's about time black people become kings again. I thought you said it's about time we live in castles again. I thought you said it's about time we be ruling all of the planet again. I thought that's what you said, Jay. Did you say that or did you not say that? If you said that, then it's about time you start living up to it. So this is Puffy giving Jay Electronica a motivational speech. He gave him every area. He said what you need to do. He said why you need to do it. He said who you're doing it for. He said why you're destined to do this. He warned them about the, the setbacks and the negativity is going to come from it. He told them how to deal with the, what's going to come from it. And then he reminded them one more time, hey, you said this. You said it was about time black people come back and be kings. When is it going to happen? Is, are you the king or are you not? Are you going to do it or are you not? So that's Jay Electronica's verse. Now we got to get the verse too, Jay-Z's verse. This is the verse I was going to do, but as you can see, Jay's, Jay Electronica's verse was just as good and 
courtesy of Puffy. So shout out to Puffy for saying that to him, for giving Jay Electronica that verse and to Jay Electronica for remembering it. So now let's get to verse two. This is Jay-Z giving his part. And he says, in this, <coughs> in this manila envelope, the result of my insanity, the quack said I crossed the line between real life and fantasy. So manila envelope is, for those who don't know, if you ever go to a, like a psychiatrist or a psychologist, and you're, you're underage or you have someone taking care of you, they put their analysis of you, whatever they think your problem is or whatever they think your diagnosis is, they put it in a manila envelope and they give it to your parent or your caretaker or your social worker, whatever it is. So he said in the manila envelope is the result of my insanity. So basically he's already saying they already have determined that I'm in insane because I know that's what they wrote in this manila envelope that they're handing over to us. So in the manila envelope is the result of my insanity, the quack, so quack is like a word people use to describe like a, a psychiatrist, like a shrink. So basically the quack said, or a doctor, whatever you want to call it, the quack said I crossed the line between real life and fantasy. Then the next line, can it be the same one on covers with Warren Buffett, because Jay-Z was on the cover of Forbes with Warren Buffett a couple years ago. And he's saying, he's basically paraphrasing what they're thinking, what the doctors are thinking about Jay-Z. Can it be the same one on covers with Warren Buffett was ducking the undercovers when he was a drug dealer, ducking the undercover cops, was warring with motherfuckers. Warring as in going to war, warring like violence, was warring with motherfuckers. So he's saying the doctor said, you cross the line between what's real, what's actual reality is, again, in the doctor's mind, his reality, and what's fantasy. Like, you think you're going to be on the cover with Warren Buffett when you've been ducking undercover cops and going to war with drug dealers in the streets? How, do you, how are you even believing that? You have crossed the line. You're thinking fantasy right now. The real life is you've been in the streets. How are you, how are you even thinking this? And that's why you're here in the first place coming to see us. How can you be the one on, cover, on the cover with Warren Buffett? That makes no sense whatsoever. And then he says... You went from warring, warring with people in the street, to Warren, Warren Buffett, undercovers, for undercover cops to covers, on covers of magazines. And y'all know Jay-Z is the king of the double entendres. This, this is crazy. So anyway, he says, undercovers to covers. If you believe in that sort of luck, your screws need adjusting. So, so basically, he's, it's kind of like irony, irony that Jay-Z is using because he's already achieved these things. But he's basically retroactively saying what people would have said about him if he would have said everything that's happened to this point for me jay-z let's say this was maybe 2010 2011 when this song came out jay-z is basically saying to all y'all to decipher this he's saying that if i would have predicted 15 20 years ago that i would be standing right here doing these things on covers with warren buffett of forbes magazine and doing this stuff based on who i was 20 years ago a drug dealer in the street carrying a gun selling drugs ducking undercover cops everybody would have been like if you believe in that happening, listen, something is wrong with you up here. You need to go see a doctor. You need to go to the shrink. So basically, y'all gotta catch what he's y'all gotta catch what he's saying here. He's kind of retroactively saying what people would have said to him. He said, if you believe in that sort of up, your screws need adjusting. And then he said, and this is this is the, the doctors, the, the naysayers basically, the retroactive naysayers to Jay-Z saying, look, you know what world you're in? You're in a world of no justice and black ladies on the back of buses. So y'all know Rosa Parks, how she was sitting in the front of the bus. She wouldn't get up and give up her seat. That's how the civil rights movement started. So he says black ladies in the back of buses, which is what happened most of the time. Rosa Parks was the one who finally took a stand, quote unquote, took a stand metaphorically, but she was actually sitting down. She's the one that made it all happen because she refused to go sit in the back of the bus like everybody else did. So you're in a world where black people sit on the back of buses. And then Jay-Z comes back to himself and says, I'm the immaculate conception of rappers slash hustlers. So all y'all, any of y'all are big Jay-Z fans, y'all know back in volume, the volume one album, he said, I ain't no rapper, I'm a hustler. It just so happens that I know how to rap. So he's saying, I'm the immaculate conception, which basically means a woman getting pregnant without sex actually happening. Like they said, that's where Jesus came from. Different conversation. I'm the immaculate conception of where you take a rapper and a hustler and they have, they have a kid, that's what comes out as me, Jay-Z. Because he talked about that a long time ago. And then the next line, my God, it is so hard to conceive, double entendre, so hard to conceive. I get it from the previous line. It's so hard to conceive how this could happen. But then the next line he says, but it all falls perfect. I'm like autumn is to trees. So everything fell perfectly in line the way it was supposed to, even though it's completely, completely out of line with reality for something like this to happen for me. But it all fall perfect, falls perfect. I'm like autumn is to trees. And then the doc interrupted. So Jay-Z was talking about himself for a minute. Now the doc interrupted his thought pattern and said, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
let, let me use let me stop you right there from talking about how perfect everything is the doctor interrupted he scribbled a prescription for some prozac anybody know what prozac is the medicine they give you when people think something's something's going on up here that they can't figure out they give you some medicine they medicate you so you know how people say now don't medicate meditate but anyway they gave him they scribbled a prescription for some prozac you know when you go to the doctor and they think something's wrong they give you they write a prescription you go to the pharmacy and you buy it so the doctor scribbled a prescription for some prozac and he said take that for your mustard boy this is what the doctor says to jay-z he says boy you must be off your rocker i.e crazy if you think you'll make it off the strip before they pock it so pock you meaning tupac and we know what happened to tupac he got shot he said you must be off your rocker and crazy jay-z if you think you're going to get out of the drug game before somebody pops you before somebody shoots you and he said you think you'll make it off the strip and those of you who know how tupac got killed he got shot in las vegas and y'all know in las vegas the famous street is called Las Vegas Strip. It's actually called Las Vegas Boulevard, but everybody calls it the Strip. So he said, you think you'll make it off the Strip before they pop it, before they two pop it. So another double entendre by Jay-Z, which is, we not only want to get into Jay-Z's lyrical ability and how people don't even catch the double entendres in his lyrics. But anyway, you think you'll make it off the Strip before they pop it. Next line, nigga, you got to be psychotic. You are something psychotically wrong with you or you are mixing something very potent with your vodka which means you're you're an alcoholic you're drinking a lot of alcohol and you mixing something in that alcohol that's making you more crazy than a regular alcoholic that's what the doctor's saying to him you got to be psychotic or you even you are like a triple level alcoholic right now it takes a lot to shock us we're doctors we're we're shrinks we listen to people who have mental problems every day so the doctor is saying listen it takes a lot to surprise us because this is all we do all day is listen to people who are crazy like you are but you are even on a higher level than most of us. It takes a lot to shock us, but you being that prosperous, you prospering, you having that much success is preposterous. That's completely crazy. It takes a lot to shock us, but you being so prosperous is completely preposterous. That makes no sense for you to be that successful. No way at all. Next line, how could this nappy headed boy, for those of you not black, you know, nappy hair is like black people got that nappy hair, not that quote unquote good hair, Becky with the good hair, right? We don't have good hair, we got nappy hair. How can this nappy headed boy from out of the projects, because Jay Z's from Marcy Project, this nappy headed boy from the projects become the apple of America's obsession? Now, Jay Z, we know Jay Z is an international superstar. He's married to Beyonce, he's sold millions and millions of records, he's been a president of a label. Jay Z, besides the Beyonce thing, Jay Z is certified by himself a superstar in the entertainment business. We all can agree with that. How can this nappy headed boy from out of the projects? become the apple of America's obsession. Then the last line that the doctor is saying to Jay-Z here, this is Jay-Z just saying what the doctor said, you are totally disconnected with reality. You have no idea what's actually real here. You're completely out of your mind. Don't believe in dreams, kid. Why are you believing in dreams? Who told you you should believe in a dream? You need to see reality for exactly what it is. Since when did black men become kings? Where do you know of a black man becoming a king? Anywhere in life. So this again, y'all gotta y'all gotta catch is a little bit higher level than just a normal rap verse that Jay Z saying here, because he's saying what somebody would have said to him 20 years ago if he would have said, "Hey, I'm going to become this guy. I got this girl. I sold this many records. I'm at these awards. I get, I had these jobs. I got these uh, high corner offices. I got these penthouses. I got these cars. I got this much money. I'm on the cover of Forbes magazine with the richest man in America." Nobody would have believed that 20 years ago when he's standing on the corner selling drugs. Nobody would have believed it. He's actually right. So all this verse, most of this verse is Jay-Z saying what the doctor would have told him back then if he would have went to a psychiatrist and predicted his success. And Jay Electronica's verse is almost all of his verse is Puff Daddy telling him. So y'all got to catch how these two verses go together because this is the genius of this song. So Jay Electronica is the up and coming guy who hasn't even put out an album yet. And he's, he's telling us what Puff Daddy, who's the superstar, is telling him, yo, this is what you need to do, why you need to do it. Listen, you can do this. You can do it, and here's all the reasons you got to do it, and here's the motivation to do it. These are all the people who will benefit from it. So Puffy's telling Jay Electronica, these are all the great things you got to do and why. And then you get Jay-Z, who's already at the point where Puffy is talking about, saying, look, if I would have told anybody that I would become what Puffy told you you need to become, Jay Electronica, nobody would have believed it. Do y'all understand this? Like, this is one of the best songs. Y'all listen to these two verses. If you never heard this song, listen to it. And if you have heard the song, listen to it again now that you heard me break this down so y'all can catch what they're doing right here. Because this is, this is musical genius, the way that they put these two verses together right here. It's 
you the new guy. Let me tell you how great you need to be. Listen, I'm the great guy. I'm gonna tell you how crazy people would have thought if I would have predicted my greatness. So he's letting them know nobody's gonna believe you. Nobody would uh, understand you predicting this greatness, but you still gotta go for it because listen, everybody's looking at you like you're completely out of your mind. Nobody's gonna believe it no matter what you do until you actually do it. Ladies and gentlemen, this song right here, Shiny Suit Theory, J Electronica featuring Jay-Z is a must listen. Y'all gotta listen to it over and over and catch the stuff that they saying. They are dropping, they dropping acres of diamonds on this song right here. These are absolute jewels. So ladies and gentlemen, listen to this video again if you wanna catch this. Listen to the song if you never heard it. I, I strongly urge you to listen to the song if you never heard it. This is another video in the Success Principles, Success Principles series. If y'all wanna hear me do more of these, Leave me a comment. Make sure you like the video. Hit me on Twitter. Hit me on Snapchat. Let me know you like it. And also let me know in the comments what song you want me to cover, what artist you want me to cover. I like doing these when I find a song that really inspires me enough to break it down like a song like this one. So everybody, hope you all enjoyed this one. Let me know if you did or if you didn't. Work on your game. DreAllDay.com What could you not do with more confidence? Less attention to the negativity of other people. More focus on your goals than nothing else and not letting unfortunate circumstances slow you down. Would all of those help you out? Well, go to dreallday.com slash bulletproof. Check out my new eight-week course called Bulletproof Mindset. Get started, and I'll see you over there. Work on your game. If you're on Snapchat, hit me on the snap. My snap name is at Dre Baldwin. You already know how that works. And I got a podcast, if you didn't know. It is called Work On Your Game. It is an everyday podcast where I talk about getting yourself into the right mindset, that bulletproof mindset. Getting yourself seen, heard, known. Getting the exposure you want and making things happen in your life instead of waiting for things to happen to or for you. Subscribe to that podcast. We're on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. Make sure you check it every single day. Make sure you're subscribed so you catch the heat. Work on your game.